Hey, what's up coach? Uh, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a longer q and I have a bunch of questions that I've gotten recently from coaches that I've either been working with or coaches that uh, send me messages every day. So uh, let's roll the intro and we'll get right into it. All right, now we're gonna kick this off with a question I get every single day. Uh, this guy asked, he said, Ben, can I start a business with no money? And um, this is something that, you know, a lot of coaches that don't have a business yet, they'll always ask me, they'll be like, hey, I don't have any uh, savings to invest into my own business. Um, you know, can I start with no money? And the answer is yes, uh, but it all comes down to how resourceful you are, all right? And I'll give you a great strategy. I've helped a lot of people do this already. Um, if you don't have any money, then you need to go make money, all right? And I think the fastest and easiest way to go make money is go to social media or go through your contact list on your phone and put together a free camp or free clinic uh, if you don't have any money in your business, we need to start getting traction, all right? So when you get traction, you start to create money, all right? So put on a free clinic or a free camp. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what you do. Um, make it awesome and collect everyone's information before the clinic or camp and then follow up with everyone um, either on the day, like after the clinic is done or after and call people and sell them into your program so they can start paying you, right? And this is the thing, a lot of coaches that I've talked to, uh, and you know, I've talked to coaches for the last six years now, a lot of these guys and girls are afraid to sell. They're afraid to put themselves out there. So with you, like, if you don't have any money, you need to go generate the money. And the way you do that is by demonstrating and training uh, and getting traction right? You can't get traction uh, if you feel like you can't start because you don't have any money. So what I would recommend doing is do that. Then you can invest some of that money into like getting insurance, uh, legally setting up your business and like do things the right way, which is something a lot of coaches don't do, right? And that stuff doesn't require much money at all. Uh, you could legally start your business like for sure at this point, you could legally start your business for under probably $500, right? Uh, that could depend on what bank uh, you go to, uh, how you set up your LLC, or if you get a sole proprietorship. Uh, I'm not gonna go into those details here on this video. I have other videos on YouTube where I talk about that sort of stuff. Um, but to answer the question, yes, you can start with no money, but go make money, right? Uh, you're not running a charity, you're running a business. So if you really wanna get started, go do a free camp, go do a free clinic, put yourself out there, follow up with people, call them, sell them into your program. Now you have the money, right? So that should clearly answer that question. Um, if you are thinking about starting and you don't have any money to invest into your program. Now, the other thing that I'll say along with that is there's no way that you don't have money, right? I, I, I hate when people tell me that because if you wanted to, like this is probably a bad example because I, I have an old iPhone, but if I wanted to, I could go sell this phone, uh, use that money, go start a business tomorrow. I could go sell this computer. Uh, there's probably so much stuff that you could just get rid of that you don't even need to use that uh, to fund your business, all right? And uh, I had a video that I published recently about five things that coaches waste money on. I recommend go watch that video. You'll probably save thousands of dollars if you watch that video and uh, you won't fall into the trap that a lot of coaches fall into at the beginning, right? You can just go to YouTube, go search that video that I already have. That's the first one. Uh, the second one, I get this question all the time. Uh, this is something I wish I would have known earlier on in my business, but the question is, should I drive to my client's homes to uh, run my sessions? And at the beginning, when you run your business, I think that's totally fine. I think going to people's houses to train is totally fine. 
uh, it's just not scalable. And long term, you just can't do it. Like you're one person, uh, you going from you know point A to point B, and then going from point B to point C, that takes too much time over the course of the week to go from home to home, and you'll be capped out. All right, you'll be capped out with the amount of clients you can take on. Um, unless you start getting more clients to show up at your clients' houses, which I don't think they're going to want you to do. So if you're doing any sort of private training, uh, I would say you can do that. But I would say after you get like three or four clients, then you want to consolidate everything into one location. So this is where it comes down to being resourceful. If you don't have, um, at that point, if you have three or four clients, you have money coming in. So you could use some of a portion of that money to run out of field, run out of gym, go to a church, uh, go to a YMCA. I mean, I could think of a million different places you can run your sessions. Uh, so you have a centralized location versus going to everybody because the more clients that you go to, ultimately, if you look at it on a calendar, all of your time gets swallowed up with you being on the road. Now, I do have some coaches that I work with that still travel to clients, but what they do is they charge an absolute premium when they go and travel to clients homes and think about it that's like a luxury service like they don't even have to go anywhere that's an awesome deal for them so you should charge an absolute premium if you are doing that if you want to include that as a service but even with that it's still not scalable right so should you drive to clients homes i think at the beginning being scrappy being resourceful yes um, if you feel like you need to um, if you don't have a location, but then I would reinvest some of that money into a location, um, and do that as quickly as possible because the, the more clients you take on, the more houses you go to, uh, ultimately the less money you can make because you can make way more money by having everybody meet you and you save way more time. And I know that from, uh, from experience, I used to drive to everybody's houses. Uh, I thought it was awesome until I realized, wow, I am like probably losing money every day because the amount of uh, miles that I'm putting on my car, like I'm having to get gas all the time. I'm going from house to house. I remember there was some, there was like two houses that were like an hour away from each other that would, I would go to every Tuesday afternoon. And I was, I would spend like two hours in a car. It's like, can't run a business that way long term. All right. So that's that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, next one here is how many players, clients should be in my group sessions? This is a really good question. Um, at the end of the day, the, the question I would flip over to you is how quality can your program be if there are X amount of players at your session? So this is going to vary with every coach. There's a lot of coaches that I've worked with that only do one-on-one -on -one training. They only specialize that in that. They hate group training. They, they don't wanna do group training. They think group training is not good for their clients. So they hone in on one-on-one -on -one and that's cool. That works for them. Um, so in their group sessions, they might have like maybe like two or three kids max, all right? That works for them. Uh, there's other coaches I talk to, like there's plenty of guys and girls that are PE teachers that I've worked with they're comfortable working with like 20 or 30 kids at once by themselves with no assistant coaches. And that's cool, right? That works for them. They can still run a high quality session with that volume of clientele at one session, right? Uh, for someone like myself, like, you know, at the beginning, I would only did one-on-one -on -one training. Then I realized, I was like, wait, group training is easier on my body. Group training is better collectively for my clients. Um, it's more competitive. They push each other more. The quality of my session was started to be a lot higher than it was when I would be tired, you know, on hour three or hour four of my private training that day. So I switch everything over to groups. I like that more. Um, there's no perfect amount that you can have. I would say the better communicator you become, the more clients you're going to want to have per hour. Like, that's just how it works. Um, and that's something I am evolving into in my own uh, soccer training business is I'm looking to have uh, coming up 16 to 20 kids per session uh, and make that a quality session. Uh, two, three years ago, I could have never had that many kids in one session because I didn't want to. I, f I felt very uncomfortable with that uh, high of volume uh, in one session. But with experience, um, with learning and getting better communication, 
You could take on as many people as you feel comfortable as long as the quality is high. That's the way I look at it. Um, and last thing I'll say about that, there's one coach I'm helping right now. He is comfortable with 40 kids in the gym per hour, right? So right now I think he has, I think there's right around 120 clients that he works with. They all, they come back to back to back. Like on Sundays, he trains from uh, 4 to 7 p.m. That's his whole business, right? And that works for him, all right? So think about that. That, that might be a much different business model than what you do, but the opportunities are endless uh, when you become a better communicator and you're more confident in your coaching ability in front of a lot of kids, all right? Hopefully that helps. Uh, next one here. This is I see this question like probably every two hours, <laughs> all right? It's my clients only want one-on-one -on -one training. How can I shift to groups? So the first thing that you need to know is it, I don't care what your clients want, <laughs> right? Uh, at the end of the day, it's your business. Like if you've positioned yourself as the elite one-on-one -on -one trainer in your area and you're looking to get out of that, then you need to reposition your business as the elite group training. And you need to instruct your clients that you're going to be transitioning your business into groups and you need to tell them why you're going to be doing groups and how it's going to benefit them and their child and how that's going to impact the results of their child and and why that's better for them right than doing what they're doing now so if you don't understand those things if you can't sell it to your clients who are doing one-on-one -on -one training they're always going to just want one-on-one -on -one training and you'll never be able to transition so the first thing you have to do is you have to know that this is your business your clients are paying you. This is not their, uh, their business. They shouldn't be able to dictate how you run your business, right? You started your business. You're the one who's training, or maybe you have a staff under you who's doing all the sessions. Uh, it's your thing, all right? And if you feel like you can't transition or shift into groups, then ultimately it's their business. And you need to have a reality check and, and realize that, no, this is your thing. You can run it however you want. And I, I see coaches all the time who transition from private training to group training. I, I see it every day in my program. Uh, it works for a lot of people, but it's not going to work until you realize it's your business. And, you know, I've talked about that sort of, sort of stuff for years on this YouTube channel. Go, go back four or five years uh, ago. I talk about this all the time about how you should be the captain of your ship and your client should be following every move that you make, right? Hopefully that helps. Uh, next one, uh, this is a, man, this is a really good one that um, it's gonna require a little bit of time for me to, to completely answer this, but it's, I feel like every month I'm having to find new clients because the current clients are leaving. How can I fix that? So these are coaches that either run session by session um, programs um, or it's like month to month. And then, you know, at the end of the month, clients are like, hey, we're not going to train next month. And then the coach feels like, well, now I need to go replace them and get somebody else. So if your business is set up like that, I promise you 1000 percent, you probably have less than a year left of being in this industry. Um, and it's because it's going to be a roller coaster and you're not going to be able to do your best work coaching when you're thinking too much about the business, right? If you're thinking too much about people going, uh, coming and leaving, and it's, it's too unstable, the quality of your coaching is just going to drop. It's going to drop through the floor, right? So what you need to do is change how you operate. Um, and this is why coaches that join my program, the, the ones who make these changes ultimately, have much better businesses. Uh, they'll they'll offer like three, six, or twelve month commitments to clients. Clients are agreeing, like on a contract. Clients are paying online. Like these clients are streamlined into a system instead of coaches chasing them down every month, like begging them to work with them. Right? Because there's nothing going to be worse to your business than at the end of the month you have five clients who are like, hey, we can't train next month, or hey, we need to pause next month. Or, hey, can we come back in three months from now? That will ruin your business, right? So you have to be able to shift into a different model of accepting clients versus 
trying to stand the hamster wheel every month and get new people, right? And the thing is, it, I, I hate saying this out loud, but it's true. If you have people that are coming and going all the time, then I would question, you know, why are they doing that? Like, are, is your program not good? Like, why are they leaving all the time? Like, have you already, like, like what, what's the problem? That, that's what I'm trying to, to figure out here with your business. If you have people leaving all the time, it, are they uncommitted? Are they not showing up? Do they not value your training? Like, what is it? What's the problem? Oftentimes what I've seen is when you increase the value of your program and you increase the cost of your program, that fixes that problem permanently, right? Fixes it permanently because now you have more committed clients that value your program more, all right? And that comes down to really diving deep into your offer, how you talk to prospects over the phone, how you enroll them, what's the application process look like. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces there, but um, if you have people leaving all the time and you're adding them to, you're adding new clients to replace them, your business can't scale, it can't improve. It's always gonna either stay the same or it's gonna get worse every month. Um, so if you have any questions on that, feel free to, to reach out. That is a common problem that I fix with coaches that I help, right? That that problem alone is a massive one. And it, when you roll people into uh, the higher level commitments, that solves a huge problem in their business. You make way more money. Uh, you stress way less about um, your clients. And it doesn't even matter if they show up to your sessions at that point. They're already committed. All right, so that, that's, that's the difference. Um, next one here is what is one sales tip to close clients faster? So I have a lot of information on YouTube. Um, first thing I'll tell you is like, if you go do your research on my channel, like I give hundreds of sales tips. Um, but one that I can think of off the, off the top of my uh, mind here, it's when you talk to people, you need to frame the conversation, all right? And what I mean by that is from the very beginning of the relationship, you are in control. That means that you are calling them. The call is scheduled. You know what to say on the call, so you're prepared. You're not on the highway trying to talk to a, a client. You're, you're not at dinner with your wife or with your girlfriend. Like You are in a room or an office in a controlled environment, talking to someone over the phone or talking to them over Zoom, um, and you're organized. This is a big problem that most coaches have. They're not organized when they get on calls. Like They're all over the place. They don't know what they're offering. They don't have the commitment. They don't have a process of collecting money. So when you're organized, all right, which is the tip, is get more organized. When you are more organized, you appear to be a thousand times more professional. And think about it. If a parent is, is getting in touch with you about training, I promise you they have also gotten in touch with your nearest competitors. They've, they've gone on Google. They've looked. They've gone on Facebook. They're looking at reviews. They're shopping other trainers against you. And if they talk to one person who's more professional than you, they're going to go with that person. It, it doesn't even matter how good of a trainer they are. That person just won their business. So this is the thing, when you are more organized and you're more professional, you attract the person who's shopping that's looking for the right trainer, right? That instantly makes what you do better without putting a lot of effort in, all right? So how organized you are uh, will determine ultimately the quality of your clients. If you're super disorganized, I can imagine your clients are very disorganized. Uh, they're always late on payments. They're not taking you serious and you probably are sick and tired of them, right? If you are organized, you don't deal with disorganized clients, right? You attract ultimately who you are, all right? That's something I learned a couple years ago and that has changed my business for the better, right? Now, uh, that is it with the questions that I have here. There's one more bonus question um, that I thought of when I was talking earlier about starting a business with no money. So if you are really hungry to start a business and you have zero dollars, right? You don't have any money. 
I would create a goal to over the next 30 days, like go force yourself, like force yourself to make anywhere between $500 and $1,000. And if you can do that without having any money at the beginning, right, then you're probably going to be resourceful enough in a year from now to stay in business. And, and the reason why I say that is because a lot of people try to start something and they will start with money. They'll, they'll pour money into logos, t-shirts, websites, all this stuff that at the beginning doesn't drive revenue, right? And then they don't know how to get clients, <laughs> right? So I would recommend like give yourself a 30 day deadline of, all right, I'm gonna make at least $500 this month. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to hunt. I'm going to go find clients. I'm going to find ways of providing value in my city. I'm going to network. I'm going to do whatever it takes to generate some money, right? And last thing that I'm going to say is I am developing a new program for coaches. Uh, it's called 44 Ways of Getting Your Next Client. So I have 44 different tactics and strategies that have worked for myself have worked for coaches that i uh, consult with and i've distilled those into very simple steps and there's a framework with action steps for every single idea and concept and uh i'm very confident that if you're subscribed to this channel like and you like the content i feel like that program would be an awesome fit for you um, there, you know, it's 44 different videos and it's all step by step. And, uh, I'm not done yet, uh, releasing that program, but if you are interested in that and you want to kickstart your program or you want to grow and scale, I have so many little, uh, strategies that I know are going to help you scale your business, uh, to the next level. And the cool thing too, about that program is all of those ideas, um, there's not one that requires you to spend any money, all right? So it's 44 ways of doing it without spending a dime on advertising, all right? So pretty cool. If you want to check that out, um, reach out to me, 210-960-5771. It's not ready yet at the time of this video being published, uh, but it should be up, um, and I'll talk about it on a later YouTube video. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope this helped. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, subscribe, reach out to me, 210-960-5771. And uh, if you are also, if you are brand new here and you aren't on my newsletter, make sure go to buildmysportsbiz.com. Uh, just sit on that page for like five seconds. There's going to be a pop-up that pops up on the channel or sorry, on my website and uh, enter your name and email there. My newsletter is awesome. Uh, you'll get a lot of value from that every week. And a lot of coaches tune into that every single week. So if you like what I do on YouTube, you'll love my newsletter. All right, that's it. And uh, I'll see you later.